Okay, let's now concentrate on our primary navigation. This is of course what we're aiming for. And this is what we currently have. Nothing but a little word inside a blank band. So the first thing we're going to need to do obviously is alter the markup. So we go into our code editor and we'll have a look at our index.html. Uh, now let's see what do we have here. We've got our uh, band navigation. This is what we're looking at. Uh, with a few more divs inside, just as I said last time, we obviously pile things together using divs and now we can improve the, the semantics of what we're actually been building. So the first thing I'm going to do is swap out this central container. Instead of being in a div, we're going to make it a nav. Um, you should always put your navigation lists within an, an additional nav element uh, because it describes perfectly what's going on uh, and requires very little effort from you. So that done, uh, we can now look at, um, let's see, what are we doing here? We need to actually swap out this for, um, for a UL. Great. Now we're basically going to fill that up with uh, with list items. Each one is going to have some kind of uh, some kind of link. So there'll be a few of these. Let's just copy and paste those. We'll have home. I have one for tech. This is all fairly generic nonsense. Business. Entertainment, what else do we have? Social media and contact according to the design. Social, oh, excuse me, social media contact. All right, let's save that. And there we have a colossal menu within our navigation band. So that obviously needs uh, some, some styling straight away. So the first thing we're gonna do is kick off some navigation styles within our CSS file. Don't know what's going on with my spelling today, that's fine. Okay, so let's see, we want to first of all zero out um, any margins that have been uh, applied to the, to, the, to the ULs and to the, to the LIs within, within that obviously having dealt with um, dealing with the boilerplate skeleton boilerplate there have been some styles applied to you to an ordered list so we'll get rid of those so that's a good start and now we can be a little bit more uh, concentrate on getting things a little bit more presentable so we'll have the nav primary and we're going to focus on the list elements the list items Display things in line, float things to the left. This is just going to make sure that we remove any any additional uh, spacing in things. And we need to make sure that these have a position of relative, uh, which we'll need in order to use our drop down later on. How are we doing with that? That's not really reset very much at all, is it? So let's see. Let's now have a look at the anchors within them. We're going to display those as an inline block, which will allow us to determine their dimensions, uh, but rem keep them remaining uh, as an inline element. We're going to, have to put a line height in 49, remembering, of course, that that ties in with our seven pixel baseline grid. Uh, I've got a color here, of course, taken from our PSD. Uh, I want these to be uppercase, so I'm going to put that in like so. I want to get rid of any styling. Get rid of the underline there, of course. Font weight's going to be bold. And uh, letter spacing, because we're dealing with uppercase, uh, I'm just going to increase ever so slightly like so. Now I'm actually not affecting this at all, am I? So there's obviously something wrong with the way that I'm referencing things. Uh, it's because I've got this additional this additional div here. Uh, oh no, of course. I haven't actually assigned... What's the matter with me? 
I've actually assigned a, a class of primary to my nav. That was silly of me. So this is what we're working towards now. We have our, um, of course, you can have multiple navs throughout your documents. So it's always a good idea to to make sure that you, um, in some way, identify your nav as being a, a primary navigation. So that's what we've done. Now, if I have a look, we've got something that's a, a lot more, uh, a lot more recognisable as a navigation. Now let's carry on. Uh, I've missed some padding on that. I could do with some padding either side. So um, let's see. That should improve things. Okay, that's looking an awful lot, an awful lot better. Okay. Mm, yeah, that was good. Okay. Now we need a hover state. So. And we're going to just apply a background color. This is taken uh, more or less from the PSD. It's okay, and then uh, we'll apply a cursor pointer to make sure that our pointer always looks like that little pointing finger when we're hovering over. Okay, so that's looking quite cool. That's the basis of our navigation in actual fact. Um, what we now need to look at is our uh, sub menu so that's going to require us to uh, to alter the markup once again uh, we have our list items here and uh, what we're going to do is drop a second ul in as a child of our entertainment list item so we'll tab in there and drop in a second ul like so you don't need to apply any clashes or anything because it can be identified perfectly well and we're going to just whack some uh, some random random anchors in there just as we did with our main navigation gaming tv again these are taken from the psd so it's all fairly nonsensical okay save that and that will of course have messed up everything and uh, you can see that it's inherited an awful lot of the styling from our first nav that's fine and that it's clearly a child of the entertainment you can see it by its positioning alone that it's part of the uh, the list item that that entertainment's in so now let's do some styling on this while we've got it visible and then we'll concentrate on it uh, on hiding it and revealing it as necessary so in order to target our sub menu like so. All we need to do is continue in a very similar fashion. It's going to be in our primary and it's just a UL within a UL. So uh, keeping things visible at the moment we want to position it absolutely. And let's see we need to make sure it's on top of everything of course including the including the slideshow that's actually underneath it. Uh, we're going to give it a background of that slightly noisy texture that we've used on everything else uh, and that is the background and bottom PNG so that's fine uh, I actually have some I need a minimum width because I want it to be at least the same width as the menu item it's dropping down from otherwise it will look strange and I also want some box shadow which I'm just going to copy and paste here to save you watching me type it all. Okay. So now you can see that that's, uh, that's an awful lot better. It's not quite right because uh, these anchors here uh, are not fulfilling the whole width of the UL that they're dropping into. Uh, it's looking better though. So let's carry on. Let's make the list anchors uh, actually behave properly. So let's target those properly. Nav primary UL. You can have another UL like that. That's, that's those anchors. And I want to display them as block. If I can get my fingers to work properly. Okay, block. And I'm going to give them a line height of 35. Again, tying in with our baseline grid. 
not that it's particularly crucial for the drop down menu and I'm going to get rid of the uppercase value on those okay and I need to make sure that the list items aren't floating anymore email, email ally, like so float on none display those as list items once again and I want a border on the bottom of those of one pixel solid 38, 37, 37, that's a value taken from the PST. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Obviously it needs to now be made uh, invisible uh, and that's where the theory of our text indenting comes in. So let's now go back and sort that out. We need to make the whole submenu vanish from its default state and that could be done in a number of ways. Uh, many people for a long time have been using uh, display none like so it gets rid of it and then of course on the hover you can bring back the display to block but the problem is that that not only hides the sub menu from uh, the presentation in our browser it also hides the actual content from any other kind of screen reader or uh, any other kind of device so that's not very accessible um, in that case. So instead of doing display none, what a lot of people have used is, um, again, uh, a position uh, way off the screen somewhere, like so. That still keeps things hidden. And then, of course, you can bring back the position upon hovering. Uh, but that's a bad idea for the reasons we discussed earlier with our... With our um, with our logo so that's that's not an option either so that leaves us with something uh, something of an something of a problem so the best thing we can do now is reduce the height to zero pixels uh, if I show you that that almost solves it but of course the contents are pushing that out so what you can now do is get rid of all those contents by stating that the overflow is hidden so now the the element is actually still there but it's got a height of zero um, and its overflow is hidden from view so that keeps everything perfectly visible to other devices uh, such as screen readers um, it makes it nice and accessible and it makes it practical for our users as well we can easily bring that out um, like so I'm just going to add a hover hover state in order to bring that out um, hover and then a direct I don't know what we're doing I need the UL within that LI so now all, all I need to do is bring it back so I'm going to put a height of auto and the overflow again auto just to get rid of those two values so checking it now, you can see that by hovering over, I get the sub menu back. That's perfectly clear. Uh, now we could maybe make things a little bit more subtle by uh, introducing some transitions, but we can't do that. We can't apply transitions to the height uh, if we're not actually specifying the, the final height. We've, we've said that it's auto so that it, it becomes as high as the actual element is. But that means we can't use any transitions. So. We're going to apply transitions to the opacity instead. So if I give it, if I give our UL a default opacity of um, zero, actually I was going to say it needs to be it needs to be ten on the hover. There we go. So it has a default opacity of zero, and upon hovering it gets its opacity back to uh, fully visible then I can apply our transition to the opacity value 
So let's have a look now. And you can see that it's fading in because we've transitioned the opacity. All right, so that's actually looking uh, almost complete. One final thing you'll notice is that the hover state on the entertainment here disappears once we're hovering over something else. So we need to apply what we know, what we call a persistent hover state, so that whenever this this list item is hovered over, uh, it maintains this background color. So let's see, where are we? I can do that like so, all the way down here. I go nav primary, and I will target the. Hover state of the. Well, actually, to demonstrate, I'll just use the uh, the anchor within the list item. So when the list item is being hovered over, uh, the anchor within that list item gets a background value of that, and you can see that it does. But obviously, all of these children anchors are also inheriting that background, so uh, that's problematic. We need to just make sure that we're only talking about the direct descendant of that list item. So that's why we use the descendant selector there. So it only selects the first immediate anchor while, they, while the list item is being hovered over. So that means that we can now perfectly see exactly what's going on with our hover states uh, and everything. So that's good. But as you can see, even though it works, it's not ideal for smaller devices. So now what we're going to do is use a little trick uh, and swap that out using jQuery for um, a nice little drop-down menu.